Hey, welcome back. Today I'm going to be shooting um, how I'm painting his horn right here. You can see that I've already painted the horns on the rest of the figure here. I've uh, given it this nice stripey kind of effect that you see uh, on some of these uh, better painted miniatures. I've always been fond of that certain special effect, as it were and um, I've painted his horn a little bit here, his broken horn. You can see the stripes on it. Right there's not a lot of horn, but it's, uh, you know, carried over from the same effect mostly here, which you can see very clearly right there. So I'm gonna get down to it and show you how that's done, or how I do it. I'm using Reaper Master Series paints, um, black and brown as the darkest color. I'm highlighting up through intense brown. This is sort of a nice orangey kind of brown. Then I'm giving it a yellow bone kind of look, the tanned leather. Highlighting that with this color here, blonde highlight. And then finally a little bit of white. So I've got that mixed up on my palette already, which you can see here. There's this blend from white all the way down to brown dark brown okay so um, I'm working from dark to light I'm just gonna grab this darkest value here and I uh, get this guy in, in a good area to see for painting let's see it's a little bit blurry that looks good so this is gonna be kinda tricky to do on camera because of the angles that I'm gonna have to twist the miniature around to get this sort of precision line work, I guess. Um, so if I do have him go off camera during the course of this filming, it's just because it's such a strange sort of angle that I'm going to have to twist him around into when that happens. And, you know, I'm going to try to get as much as I can on film so I can show you the, the concept, even if I do lose some of it off screen here because I know this is going to be kind of a very uh, you know tricky sort of um, uh, angle to capture it in and so I'm just uh, making making sure that I get the sort of the primary technique captured for you guys just in case I do have to twist it off off screen a little bit I'll keep checking the screen basically I'm just um, applying like a striped pattern okay you see this here with my brush like that and I'm leaving some of the darkest colors alone into the the shadows there and bringing out the uh, the highlights by just applying lines like a striation and I'm really that's as simple as this technique is you just leave a little bit of the dark color that you painted alone and then you bring the lighter color in on top of that and then you have a um, finished product after a lot of repetition like so much else in this hobby you have to really just uh, you know repeat things over and over again so it's kind of humid here today my paint's not really drying very fast so I'm gonna be intermittently using the hairdryer to speed up this video so that I don't have to worry about and you know becoming gloopy so Now I'm uh, moving up to this uh, intense brown color. I think I've got the dark tones established pretty well. And I'm going to paint over some of those brown lines and leave just a little bit of really dark brown alone. And, um, and you know, you're probably not going to see this uh, actual effect taking place until, you know, until we're quite a ways in with this video. I'm using my pinky to balance here. It's just a little kind of a hard line to paint. You can see I'm starting with the I'm starting closer to the base of the horn and then I'm ending my stroke on the tip of the horn. And that's really a concept that is going to make sure that the most amount of paint is going to be de um, deposited on the tip of the horn and the least amount of paint will be left on the beginning of the stroke. Oops, 
little sliding brush action there. It's not really that big of a deal because it's on the tip of the horn. I'm really just concerned about leaving these nice little stripes alone towards the, the base of the horn, really. Um, I'm going to have to really get some strange angles here, so... But if you start, you know, understanding brush strokes is kind of, I guess, what I'll talk about here. If you start a brush stroke with the tip of your brush and then drag it, the that start of the stroke is going to have the least amount of paint, and where you finish off the stroke is going to have the most amount of paint deposited on the miniature. Um, that's just the way the uh, capillary action of the stroke works and the brush control and it's just a phenomenon of brush stroke technique is that um, a little thing that I just explained there so now I have a sort of a beige color and it's it's starting to get to the highlight phase here I'm gonna leave I want this to be really on on camera here nice and crisp so right here I'm gonna leave just a little bit of that previous color and, and start applying this new beige kind of color and really focusing it towards the tip there or I wouldn't say focusing but just like focusing the amount of paint that's going to be left behind on the tip there and uh, you know I'm just making sure that I can have you guys see this stuff um, just looks like I forgot to cut my nails before this video. It's been a minute since I've shot a video, so I forgot about that. So I let my fingernails grow long because I also play guitar, and it's useful to me to have long nails. And uh, I typically keep them short, though, when I'm when I'm painting these uh, minis and filming the videos and stuff like that. But I'll have to forgive my lapse and cutting them. I'm moving all the way up to a yellow color now. Um, this is almost that that uh, tan leather, I believe. This would probably pretty much be the pure tan leather color. I want to make sure that it's dry. You can really start to see those little, what I'm calling these dags, coming, uh, coming to life now. So let me dry this off completely with the hairdryer. Again, I'm just reinforcing these ideas that I've laid down over and over again. You know, stroke by stroke, and you know, eventually you'll end up with this effect. Just be careful and and be patient, and you know, if you screw up your stroke, you want to have a a watery brush on hand. You know, I, I like to use these water brushes here, these guys, in case I screw up. So you want to have that primered and ready to go. And uh, by primer, I don't mean spray primer on it. I mean, just like you want the water to be on the brush so that you can just correct any accidents in case they happen immediately. And so you don't have to redo anything like this because it is kind of a time consuming effect. just correcting that little error there keep the flow of the strokes going in the same direction for the best effect and and try to correct them if they seem to be going astray this is a good a good time to do that during the um, establishment of this like mid-tone color in this case it's sort of a yellowy almost a bone color and you can go lots of different ways with horn, you know, you can airbrush them. They look pretty sweet with that blend, but I've always been partial to this effect. I believe I've seen this on, you know, some of the uh, just traditional um, Games Workshop miniatures from the, the past. And that's a way that they're, you know, heavy metal painters like to approach painting horn. And it's just always uh, appealed to me. So I, you know, figured out how they did that and went ahead and practiced it a bunch. And... And I like to do that one. It's not how I always paint horn, but it's how I'm doing it for this figure. 
This is a sculpted horn that I carved out of sprue. I took a thick piece of sprue from um, some model or miniature or another and I trimmed it down with some clippers. Then I shaved it a little bit with my X-Acto blade or um, Dremel tool and then I used a heat gun to kind of heat the plastic up so that I could bend it into shape here and then I went and carved it more with my um, Dremel and my X-Acto until I got the shape that I wanted and then I affixed it to his helmet. Sprue is a very useful modeling tool for conversions. Terrain. I don't throw it away. I've got other special things I do with the sprue. I've got a big you know, box I keep it in. Now the little the dags are getting a little bit weird on this little area of his horn here, so I'm going to try to correct it while I can. Make it look more uniform. I don't know if that was on camera though. Ooh, yeah, and if I wasn't filming this, I'd be doing a much better job because this is tricky. I got, I won't lie, this is tricky. I'm just trying to rush through it though, so you can see how I did it. The bigger horn, it's going to be a little more visible here. So I figured I'd do all the little ones first, and then I'd show the process on this big old honking horn right here. Now I'm all the way up to this. Um, I'm forgetting what color I used. Um, blonde highlight. And this very nice ivory kind of color, this sort of buttery white, and I'm just uh, going through and reinforcing the striations and stuff that I've painted. All the while leaving the um, the darker colors alone, trying not to go over too much anything that I've painted. My nails look real bad. You see that little interesting line right there, you know? makes it look like it's almost been damaged or it's sort of organic and unique. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, if you examine, again, I'm always talking about examining real world objects to get your ideas and uh, referencing stuff like that. And if you look at some of these kind of horns that have this effect, they're not perfectly um, striated. They'll have uh, little differences in the variations in the length of these stripes. So it's okay. Oops, that was kind of a lot of paint on my brush there. Take some of that paint off. Now that the color is getting lighter, it's going to be less, it's going to be more difficult to um, hide any mistakes. I got to be more careful with the, the brushwork here. I've sort of rapidly got to this stage. Shaky camera, I keep bumping the camera. And there's little nicks and, and damage marks on the horn that I inflicted with my X Acto so that I can paint them to look like they, they've been through damage and, and uh, battle. Some little battle wear and tear, and I'll get to that hopefully in this video. I'm going to start mixing white with that blonde highlight now to really get a nice bright white and go over this. And this is painted about four times faster than I typically would do it, but, you know, for the video, I don't want these things to be very long, and, and so I can kind of rapidly go through my technique as I do it without having to use, like, stop motion or anything so that I can explain everything as I do it. I know people are interested in that. Not everybody does that. A lot of people fast forward and kind of explain after the fact, you know, and and that's all good. I like those kind of videos too. So this is just my my approach. 
for this many. I may change that in the future depending on how you know how into my videos I get and uh, what I determine. I might try a new format for my next video, which is a more uh, concise. Um, I do like to, these kind of verbose ones because it really doesn't leave much for for um, much room for guessing because I really do try to cover everything I'm doing. And uh, you can really see the the speed at which I paint. You can see the paint on the brush tip. You get an idea of the consistency of the paint and the all you know the, as many transitions I used and colors and everything else that I'm doing. So I kind of like this slow pace, even though you do end up with a lot of videos in a certain series instead of just one video like oh how I painted this miniature. Here's a you know 10 minute long video about that. Instead, you have these, uh, you know, I think I'm on like part 14 or something, 30 minute long videos. But in the end, if you have the, uh, you know, intestinal fortitude to stick with me here and watch all this, then I'm sure you'll get something from it of my style and how I approach painting miniatures in, in my day here. Now I'm at pure white for the sake of speeding up this video. I'm just going to finish this tip of this horn with white here. I'm really going to jump ahead once it's dried. It needs to be dried quickly because we are almost 20 minutes in, or we're at 16 minutes. I guess I'm ahead of schedule, so let me dry this real quick. Alright, now I'm just going to highlight the tip of the horn. pure white. And it's quite a big jump in, in uh, vibrancy here. But I want to get in and show you actually like the battle damage and stuff. So I can always go back in later with some oil paint and, and really um, you know finesse the the transition and the gradient here and make it so it's not so harsh and that would just be a matter of applying some white oil paint like right here and then blending it down to smooth it out that's it okay so that's that effect quickly done you can see you have this nice effect if you take your time and you get this this crazy horn effect that is so pleasing to the eye and I didn't do it perfectly here, but um, it was done quickly, so that's the trade-off. Now what I want to do is um, show you how I'm going to mark up his horn like it's been damaged. I'm going to take a color of, um, let's see, I'm going to grab a really like dark kind of um, brown. In this case, I'm going to use um, Agrax Earthshade. Okay, it's another one of these Citadel uh, shades. And I'm going to just put some on my brush and put that on my palette so that I have the ability to paint with it. And I'm going to just paint little lines where the damage is on the actual horn itself. You see there's these little light chunks. You can see it in the texture on the tip of the horn there. I'm just going to reinforce these with a dark color here. I'm shaping my brush tip to make sure that it's very, very sharp. Like that. Okay. Now I'm going to add some imaginary ones. Like that. Here's another one. I'm going to just kind of enhance that last one I made. I want it to be kind of a big ding. And um, I'll put one going across like that too. And one right there. I want a bunch of battle chips on this dude's horns. I'm getting more more of this uh, color on my brush here. 
it was really humid in here today but that's kind of nice it's keeping this this paint open now here I've got to determine where I want this damage get some right in there and I think one right here would look good nice big one right there and that and that No, no rhyme or reason to this. It's just uh, randomly placed according to the way that I think they would look good. And one last one here. Okay. Now I'm going to take a dark color. Um, you can see that right there. You can see the pattern that's starting to be to be established here. I'm going to take a darker color and um, shade those. And um, I'm going to find it. I'm going to use this Nuln Oil. You can use the dab black if you still have any left, or any kind of uh, you know black color thinned down. These are just convenient because they have a translucency to them that really helps this um, effect come to life. And so they're convenient for me. I don't have to do any mixing. I can just start painting. Now I'm going through and deepening these little divots here. Like that. Just over the top where I think they need to be darker. Or deeper looking. And I'm not being as uh, finesse, gosh, is that a word, finesseful as I'd like, but, um, you know, this angle to get this thing on the camera is just hampering my flow. But it gets the job done. And we can see, see how I do it at least. These old nicks and chips and stuff like that. Now to finalize this video, I have white still open on my palette. And so I'm just going to grab pure white. Okay. And then I'm going to go back under those lines that I just created with this pure white. And then enhance the edges of those. To show that it's catching the light perhaps. not talking too much while I do this. This is the little fine detail stuff. Concentrating. start to get that sort of optical effect like that and this is extremely raw um, but you know 30 minutes and, and we're done so that's cool you know you may have seen this technique and wondered how it's done it's much more carefully than I'm doing it here but at least you get the, the point you just pick an edge that the light would be hitting and uh, highlight that after drawing in these little shaded areas. And this one's tricky. Oh, 
Ooh, that was a nice big mistake right there. I'm going to correct that quickly. Magic water pen. Just keep nailing it until that little line comes off. Good enough. Alright, so you can see the effect. And um, now I'm going to finish this by taking my hair dryer hair, and dry it. And then I'm going to take this color here, Seraphim Sepia. It's a nice kind of yellow brown. And I'm going to apply that using a brush that has no paint on it. I'm going to apply that into this middle region here. Oh, um, let me stop the camera from shaking so that we can finish off this video right here. Just to give it some of that color that it's lost. And then some water to smooth that out like that. Okay. And when that's done, it'll dry and leave you this nice sort of brown tone and help to tie it all in together. And, uh, you know, if you see a future video, I'm going to have taken some oil paint and just blend this tip down with some white probably. And just to smooth this whole thing with white to uh, get it to look a little bit, a little bit smoother. It's kind of rough. From the distance, it looks okay though. All right, cool. Well, that's that. I think um, my next video is going to be on how I painted the brass and you know what there's not really a lot of brass to paint um, or bronze or whatever that is so I guess I won't show how I did that here because there really just is not a lot well, I guess I could do a small video and just show you here I could redo this area and this brass bronze effect so I can show you how I got this sort of uh, de decayed corroded brass so that's that all right, cool. So take a look at him. I'm going to try to get him back in focus here from a distance and just look at his horn. See that exposure really just gets it's so bright. But there he goes. You can sort of see him coming to life now, you know. Getting there. He's almost done. Only a couple more videos left. I think this guy will be done. All right, till next time.